I played so much fucking good shit this year. From Software's Elden Ring making every other dev of open world games look like fucking glue sniffers. You got Kirby in the Forgotten Land over here pissing me off because I can't hate Kirby games anymore to look cool because these assholes had the gall to make an actually fucking good jump to 3D and it's actually really fun and really charming and really fucking polished. And even tons of low-key small shit that came this year that was really good. Hey, I had the Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative was basically me gobbling Uchikoshi's morphogenetic field for about 30 hours. I honestly thought this was going to be like the no contest game of the year for me. Then one day I saw a friend in VC streaming this game called uh, Spark the Electric Jester 3. Popped in, thought it looked really wicked, bought it, and I beat it in one sitting. Took me about four hours and erm, um, really fucking good, erm, um, peak fiction, erm, um, more like smell than mid. I'm goofing and gaffing over here, but honestly, I really do think this game's that fucking good. But nobody on this blue gay earth is talking about it. What the fuck? Like I've heard blips and blurbs about the Spark series and it's always been kind of like niche, but I can't help but be shocked at the radio silence for this game. So I made this video to try and uh, sell you on the game. Like, don't expect some deep dive analysis like fucking Matthew Scoliosis or whatever. Not gonna talk about how um, the Mario Courtyard in Mario 64 is actually a stroke of genius by Shigeru Miyamoto because he wanted you to use his fucking fishing pro controller or some shit. I guess I'll start by being brutally honest. This is the only Spark the Electric Jester game I've played. Am I a fraud? Um, kinda, but I think it actually says a lot about the game where I had barely any context but I still really fucking enjoyed my time with it. So what's the game part of this game part of this game? Spark the Electric Gesture 3 is a speed based platformer with combat elements. Okay but to explain this as a human fucking being and not a Wikipedia article, this game's a lot like Sonic Adventure. I know some people are gonna get pissy about me comparing indie titles to AAA titles, but you know what? You know what game's fucking awesome? Sonic Adventure. You know what game's also fucking awesome? Spark the Electric Jester 3. So all I'm trying to say is, if you fucking love Sonic Adventure like a cool guy, you'll fucking love this game. It's not any deeper than that. Grow up. And for the people who don't know what a Sonic Adventure is, generally the design is more, well, specifically the Sonic style. It's a lot more kinetic and fast paced for a platformer. It wants you to keep moving forward and don't stop really for anything. There's the long sprawls where it's just like an exhilarating show of speed, but even the more focused platforming has a lot of energy to it. This game actually takes cues from other 3D Sonics as well, like Sonic Heroes. I've even seen elements from fucking Shadow the Hedgehog of all games, like like Spark the Electric Jester 3 uses it really well, but what an interesting game to take inspiration from. So the progression in this game works like this. You got the main levels and you got the sub-levels. Every time you clear a main level, you get the sub-levels. Every time you clear a sub-level, you get a medallion. You need a certain number of medallions in order to get to the next big level. The main levels are, you know, the main course of the game. They got the most going on. They actually can run pretty long, like very regularly over 10 minutes. Sounds like a problem, but you know, as grandma says, the time flies, you're having fun. I don't know how to segue it, but I just want to talk about how much this game makes me nearly shit myself with how good the fucking level design is. There's so much shit going on. It's honestly surreal playing a 3D Sonic-like game with such fucking dense level design. Actual bona fide alternate paths in a game like this. What the fuck? This is fucking awesome. I love it. Tons of obstacles every step, tons of enemies. Like, the enemies in particular I really like. Like, it's not just homing attack fodder bullshit. They fight back. They got projectiles. They got spears. And these asshole wheel guys I keep fucking homing attacking into like a dumbass. You need to pay them some attention and think on a dime on how to maneuver around them. This game has vehicle sections that are actually fun. I'm, I'm not too surprised because like the car is literally just this guy's racing game. Oh yeah, one fucking guy made this game. Kinda. I don't think there's a set piece in this game I don't love. I don't want to show you too much because I don't want to spoil you though. Buy the fucking game, dickhead. These levels are super replayable too. Like they're filled with collectibles and you really got into like to get into the nitty gritty to find some of them. Also, it has no invisible walls and collision everywhere. The game wants you to fucking break it with the move set. I can see speedrunners like loving this shit. And as for the sub levels, you probably know how it goes. Actually, you probably don't, I lied. Yeah, the sub-levels, it's not that Generations Challenge bullshit, it's just more no-nonsense platforming for the most part. Like, the levels aren't as long, but the level design's really good, and like, it has new level design, it doesn't reuse anything really other than the aesthetics. Like, there is the gimmicky stuff like the metal collecting and the score attack, but those have like, completely original level designs too, and like, really well put together level designs. Once again, I fucking suck at Segway, so I want to talk about the controls. Spark actually uses more buttons than the average platformer. You gotta jump, you gotta double jump, you gotta dash, you gotta you got an air dash, you got a homing attack, you got a charge dash, that works on the ground and in the air, and a stomp. 
Most of the stuff has its own button, which sounds overwhelming, but over time it becomes really, really comfortable. It removes all that context shit, like accidentally homing attacking when you want to dash, or accidentally dashing when you're homing attacking. In terms of how the game feels to play, it feels like fucking sex. Spark is a nimble little bastard, but he still feels really snappy and responsive, so I really like doing the precise platforming in this game. I think it's about time I address the Takamoom in the room that is the combat. And yeah, I can't really lie, I didn't really care for it very much. You got light attacks and you got heavy attacks, and for the defense you got a shield and you got a perfect parry. You can dish out the combos, and I have seen some people post clips of doing some Devil May Cry bullshit, but as like a normal guy playing through it, I still found it kind of boring, it's a bit too mindless and mashy. Honestly, the real main problem is that the enemies don't really do enough, they kind of just stand there and take it and just look pretty. The bosses do fare a lot better because they just inherently have more interesting attacks and tend to just do more, but they still sometimes just stand around a bit too much like Buddy. And yeah, the game will stop you from platforming sometimes just to make you do the combat. But honestly, it's like kind of a non-issue because these sections are always so short. And it also has this mechanic where the more you hit enemies and like mix up your combos, the more damage you do. And you know, the more damage you do, the even quicker these sections go by. And who knows, maybe you'll get a kick out of this combat. I'm only talking with myself and maybe two other people about this game and they kind of just agree the combat's kind of eh. Maybe we're just stupid. And last and certainly not least, I want to talk about the fucking music in this game and oh my god I could ramble forever about this game. So much Like, if you got any sort of interest from anything in this video, just buy the fucking game. It's as good as it looks, really. Hey, if you stuck around for the whole video, thank you. This is my first actually kind of structured YouTube video, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, that's also okay. Uh, leave any criticisms or shit talking in the comments, because I'm actually going to read it and actually learn from it. I do plan to make more videos in the future on these low-key kind of games. And I want to, like, do my best to, like, actually make good videos. So, um, yeah, watch out for that. Um... Uh...